Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, it's the first Saturday of the month, which means it's time for the Culinary Medicine Show with the chef doc, Dr. Colin Zhu, and he's going to be making in a pressure cooker, I can't pronounce the word, <laughs> <laughs> curried butternut squash and peas. Please welcome him back to the show. How, how was your Cinco de Mayo? Did you do anything special culinarily? Uh, it's funny because you still have the picture of the chipmunk with a whole bunch of nuts in your mouth. That's probably why you couldn't pronounce pressure cooker. <laughs> <laughs> um, my single de Mayo was great. Um, you know, I went out to a, um, so I'm in the, um, the Orange County area. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Dr. Colin Zhu, um, Southern California, Orange County area, and a very large Mexican population. So I went with um, a friend to uh, visit um, some festivities. Um, and for those of you who don't know, Cinco de Mayo is not a Mexican Independence Day. <laughs> it's actually um, a battle that was won um, in the town of Puebla uh, against the French way back in the day. Um, and it's more of an American, um, I guess, a newfound American tradition to celebrate Cinco de Mayo. Um, but it's not, you know, for those that don't know. Um, but yeah, there were still festivities going on. And um, yeah, it was a lot of fun um, just uh, walking around, hearing music, um, hearing, like, watching people dance. There was like a parade, a lot of festivities. So it's always nice to, I travel a lot. So it's always nice to be able to uh, observe other cultures and, and be able to uh, you know, watch them showcase um, their traditions. So it's, it's really, really nice. So thank you for asking. How was yours? Oh, it, it, well, um, I did a, I actually worked very hard yesterday. I did a big culinary demo for the, the Truth About Health Conference. So that was very gratifying. I'm curious, have you ever been to Alvera Street? Alvera Street? Um, In Los Angeles, it's very cool if you ever get a chance. Is that the one where you see a lot of uh, vendors and sometimes there's like swap meets and stuff like that? Yeah, it's, and then they, they have like you can buy like everything about the Mexican culture, the food, mm -hmm. the clothing. I, I haven't been there for a very long time, but I always used to enjoy going there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love the one. I love festivities where street blocks are blocked off um, and then you just, you know, you just walk and, you know, visit every vendor and every vendor has a story because they're mostly, you know, mom and pa shops, small business owners. So it was nice to kind of be able to see, um, you know, these types of events going on. So, yeah. So I'm glad you're using the pressure cooker because a lot of people have them and they, I think they make it so much easier to get food ready quickly. <laughs> Yeah. So the reason why I chose this recipe is, um, you know, we're making curried uh, butternut squash and peas um, and uh, the, be the beans and legumes we're using um, are garbanzo chickpeas, um, as well as uh, uh, yellow uh, split peas um, as well. And uh, the reason why I chose um, I, I thought about this recipe is. You know, when I was in school, when I was in training, um, you just don't have time for anything. And back then, we didn't have an Instapot. Uh, when I went to school and culinary school, we learned how to use the traditional pressure cooker. Um, and that was, you know, nothing fancy. I'm sure, Chef AJ, you know, it's nothing fancy. You're always hesitant about blowing, <laughs> blowing a hole through the ceiling. Um, and it's a lot of fun. It's a great, efficient way. Um, to be able to cook food a lot quicker um, and be able to still retain, you know, a lot of nutrition. So, you know, when time has passed um, and the invention of the Instapot, um, I don't have an Instapot specifically, I have a Ninja. So that's like, um, uh, you know, Ninja's version um, of the Instapot, but it's the same concept, multifunctional pressure cooker, air fryer, saute, things like that. And um, it's great because you just throw everything there um, you don't have to, it's set it and forget it. And then once it's done, um, you can just come back to a nutritious meal. So I chose this because, um, I'm a lover of all different kinds of flavors, um, especially Indian cuisine. Um, and, uh, yeah, I decided to use this recipe. So, uh, I'm going to demonstrate, um, and, uh, ask questions uh, along the way <laughs> or Great. answer questions along the way. So. Nice. So let me see. Bring up the recipe. And the recipe will be in the show notes once this is uh, finalized. So basically what we're going to do is um, we're going to take what I did was I took some uh, chickpeas. I took 
one and a half cups of dry chickpeas, uh, one cup of dry yellow split peas, and one cup of dry wild uh, mushrooms. And I just kind of soak them um, overnight, okay? Um, the mushrooms, you know, you soak to rehydrate, okay? And also kind of like to rinse it out. Split peas, different kinds of beans, you know, um, you could cook them um, dry. Um, you can cook them canned, you can cook them, you know, soaked as well. I like to soak them because the principle is to uh, cook more evenly, okay? Um, and, you know, it's to, to make the cooking process a lot faster. Excuse my cat, if <laughs> you hear him in the background. What, buddy? <laughs> um, and yeah, so basically this is the result. Um, so you have some, you know, chickpeas, um, very, very nutritious. You have some yellow split peas um, as well. And then uh, wild mushrooms, um, these are different kinds. I believe we got this at Costco. Um, be able to uh, forage different kinds of wild edible mushrooms. But if you were to just use your own mushrooms, you could use uh, cremini, um, you can use portobello, you can use, um, I like to use shiitake, you know, to, because that's where you get a lot of the umami flavor. Um, and you can use different kinds of mushrooms. Um, so that's what I did. Okay. So you take the dry, you soak them over. Okay. And then after that, uh, the main players is the butternut squash, um, which, um, I already, I already got, um, so if you don't prep them yourself, you know, it's a lot of prep, you know, to be able to take a whole butternut squash, you know, peel everything down and cut everything down. So, um, I got, uh, you know, the pre-cut ones, um, you can easily buy these in the store and a little bit of word about cooking on a budget and especially cooking, you know, with limited amount of time. Um, there is definitely a trade-off in terms of money that you would spend for the grocery to be able to, um, you know, pre-cut, um, pre-wash, you know, these things. Um, there is the convenience factor, you save on time, um, and especially, you know, harder, uh, you know, vegetables that you don't, um, you know, you're not really used to, you just have them pre-cut. So, you know, you, I have, uh, this is like around 15, uh, 15 ounces, that was uh, medium sized dice. And then you have some English peas. Uh, these were um, kind of fall out. Um, uh, and this is around eight ounces. So I rinse these guys up and we'll put them in later. Um, so the first thing is we're going to do is I'm going to prep, um, uh, a yellow onion. Okay. Um, and prep some ginger roots and some, um, small golden, uh, petite, um, potatoes. Um, I know chef AJ, you like your starches and I'm going to, um, some garlic. Okay. So we're going to, are you able to see that? Yeah, that's beautiful. I can okay. see, I, we got a double view. We got the, the pressure cooker on the right and you on the left. <laughs> so for those that don't know, Chef AJ did not turn into a chimonk. <laughs> no, they can't see, they can't see me right now. Oh, okay, 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 <laughs> gotcha. I just, I took it off because it looks better with, with two instead of having three <laughs> <us> there. <laughs> um. Yeah, so different, um, so basically, for example, beans, if you're using, um, another word about beans is that um, a pound of dry, dried beans usually yields around five to six cups of cooked beans. Um, and usually if you get a pound of dry beans, it's usually around a fourth of the cost. Um, so that's to kind of give you, you know, some measurements um, as well. Let's see. Yeah, long fingers, I'm just noticing. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Good for piano. Huh? Do you play? Um, I played growing up. I played growing up. It's a very uh it's a very it's a very Asian thing to uh send your kids off to uh you know, play either the violin or the piano. So I did that. I didn't spend that much time doing classical music. I did more uh, new age, uh, new age music. Um, did you grow up playing um, any instruments? Yeah, uh, piano first, then clarinet, then trumpet. But really what I always wanted to play was the drums. 
Ooh, that, yes. I think that's every kid's dream yeah. is to play the drums. <laughs> it's just and so then you're just like, you're just like in a, you're just like in a waiting line, right? Um, because everyone wants to do it. It just seems like it'd be so fun. You can get all your energy <laughs> channeled. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I played the, you did clarinet. I did the flute when I was in junior high. Uh, I did the flute. I wanted to play the sax. Yeah, me too. They wouldn't let girls, when I went to junior high in 1971, girls weren't allowed drums or saxophone. I had a fight like for my rights to eventually learn trumpet. It was crazy. Oh. The, yeah, the, that's crazy like how there could be boy instruments and girl instruments yeah, yeah that is yeah and and then also like the dress code and all that so oh, yeah we had to wear dresses until about gosh almost junior high and I thought that was so unfair and in the <laughs> interim they said okay well you can wear pants as long as you wear a dress over it I just can't believe that in this day and age that they they did that you know yeah Nowadays, uh, you know, it's not like that anymore. I mean, depending on if you go to a private school, maybe, you know what I'm saying? So. Doesn't have to be, um, you know, fancy. It's just, you know, rough. So basically um, a lot, I love one pot, you know, ideas. Um, you know, meals. Um, I'm a big fan of uh, gumbo and stews and all that. Um, What's the difference? To, what is gumbo exactly? What does gumbo mean? So gumbo is French. Um, when I was, when I was, uh, I was working in the VA system um, in New Orleans. Um, so it's a, it's a very, I don't know if it's French or it's Creole. I think it's Creole and Creole has French influences. Um, and basically gumbo is almost like the closest thing I can probably um, describe as like a stew. Uh, it's like a very thick, chunky soup. Um, and it's usually over a bed of rice. Uh, there's a lot of spices. Typically it's tomato based. Um, and there is a different kinds, usually it's di uh, different kinds of seafood. Um, but I make, um, you know, a vegan version. Um, you can almost, it's, a, it's like akin to chili almost. Chili's supposed to be like thick and chunky. And for me, you know, it doesn't matter the season or, you know, the temperature. I, I like hot things all the time. Um, that's just me. Um, so yeah, if you guys, if anyone is either from, um, is either from, uh, you know, Louisiana, they definitely have tried, you know, gumbo. Or if you are going to go, um, definitely try it um, as well. Does it always have okra in it? Uh, traditional, traditional, yes, it has okra. Um, okra is awesome. Um, I remember when I was um, interning at an Indian restaurant. I would be downstairs um, in, I would be downstairs, um, you know, prepping, you know, for dinner. Um, and I would literally prep a whole box of okra. Um, and that's what you would do all day. <laughs> wow. But yes, okra is definitely key. Um, and with gumbo, traditional gumbo, um, they have um, part of the herb that's used is called uh, Sassafras, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Let me see if I have any. Do, do, do. Yeah, it's usually called filet, gumbo filet, and it's made from uh, sassafras leaves. So this is a very, uh, very popular um, brand uh, down there. So you would see this. It's a local brand. So, but you usually put this um, and this ad, adds like, it's like an earthiness to it and it helps a little, it, it, it helps to thicken it a little bit. Okay. Not too, too much. All right. So you prep, um, the ginger. Okay. So let me put this down. So a little bit of garlic, ginger, onions. Okay. And I did the, uh, potatoes. So in terms of potatoes, um, when you cut it down, um, smaller, it'll cook faster because there's more surface area. 
So that's a quick culinary tip. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to switch to, let's see, uh, Chef AJ, can you switch to, you're able to see the pot, right? Yeah, you, we have it. We've had both on the whole time. So like I said, you on the left and the pot on the right, I can switch the view any way you want. Okay. So you should be able to see that. Okay. Um, all right. I can, I can make it just the pot. I can make it just you, you tell me. Okay. So basically with the pressure cooker, uh, what we're going to do is, so with the pressure cooker, um, you know, you guys may have different versions of it, but I have one function where you're able to saute. So I'm just going to put this on uh, medium. Yes, buddy. I'm demonstrating right now. <laughs> well, uh, can we see the kitty later? Yeah, he, he just got neutered. So he's in a cone right now. Um, but yeah, he's a uh, meet the new guy. His name is Naruto. Oh, he's adorable. He's uh, he's he's going he's going to be the mascot of the chef doc. Naruto, he's, say hi. He's say hi. beautiful. Oh yeah, say hi. He's kind of like an orange tabby, like Maine Coon. Look, and he looks so he TV. looks so friendly too. Yeah, <laughs> he's very vocal. He always wants your attention. He he's uh he's more like a dog than anything. He he's not food motivated. He's just uh, attention motivated. He always wants your attention. That's the kind yeah. of cat I want. Oh. Yes, I, that's what I wanted. I want the dog like cats. Um, so that's what I did. I'm turn on this. Okay, so basically. Um, this is a this is a Indian spice box. Okay, every Indian household has one of these. Okay, um, and uh, you know it's different kinds of basic um, you know spices. So this here it's empty right now, but this is turmeric. Okay, this is red uh, chili powder. Okay, this is coriander uh, powder. This is mustard seeds, okay? This is garam masala, okay? And this is uh, cardamom, okay? Cardamom seeds. And then this is cumin seeds, okay? You're, were you able to see that? You're able to see that, right? Yeah. That's... Okay, so what we're gonna do is that in this pot, um, in this pot, what we're gonna do is that we're going to, I'm gonna turn on the pressure cooker on medium heat, okay? Now, typically, typically what happens is um, for Indian cooking, okay, um, the first part is to bloom spices. And blooming spices is really, you're cooking it in a way where you're kind of unraveling the aroma, the flavor, um, all the nutritious um, punch that comes with um, these uh, culinary, you know, Indian, you know, uh, spices. Um, it takes years to be able to master it. Um, and, you know, my instructor, he was Italian um, in culinary school, um, awesome, awesome guy. He went to India um, as to do a meditation retreat. He went to an ashram. And then through that process, um, you know, he was able to get uh, Indian cooking, um, you know, taught to him. And so he just fell in love with it. So, um, so it was, he was my favorite instructor. He still is. Um, so you have this big, jolly Italian guy, and he's just really good with, you know, Indian slash Ayurvedic uh, cooking. And uh, yeah, so this is like your basic premise. And what we're going to do is that when you're blooming spices, you typically do this with some fat. OK, um, and Indian cooking, you know, a lot. There's a lot of vegetarian cooking, but the trade off is, is that, you know, there's a lot of frying. Um, there's a lot of fat being used like ghee. Okay. Ghee is clarified butter. Okay. And when you're blooming spices, you're using some sort of fat. So because we're on Chef AJ show, um, we are, you know, doing it differently. So to, to, uh, bloom spices, we would have to dry roast them without using, um, you know, fat, not the full effect, but you know, you get, you get, you get, uh, you get some effect. So we're going to do about two. So roughly one and a half uh, teaspoons of uh, cumin seed, mustard seed, 
Let me turn this up a notch. That's weird that, oh yeah, that, that you just, so you're actually toasting them just right in the pressure cooker. Yes, exactly. Cool, right? Yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, so you got to be super, 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 you know, careful that you're not, um, you know, burning it because you're dry roasting it. Now, if you're not doing this in the pressure cooker, you can do a saucepan and just do it there um, as well. Um, so I like a little bit of heat. Um, what was the top? Okay. So your insert is white. What's it made out of? Because mine's silver because it's stainless steel. The insert? You mean this? Yeah, yeah, the white. It's white. Mine is like silver colored. Why is yours white? It's not white. It's it's um it's probably the light reflection. It's okay. um it's a little bit it's uh, it's silver as well. And oh, I believe wow. and I believe it's ceramic. Um, oh, it's ceramic. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's All so right. Strange. So we're gonna dry roast these a little bit. So you can't feel it but there's um there's heat coming out of this okay so we're just going it's almost like toasting it a little bit okay okay so there's a lot of okay i gotta turn on the <laughs> someone posted they wish you could be their wellness doctor i don't think they know that you could because you actually can consult even virtually yeah so that's a great great segue um so for those of you who don't know, so I'm, uh, if you guys are seeing me for, for the first time, um, so I'm trained in, I'm board certified in family practice. Um, so, so the recipe calls for four tablespoons. So I'm just going to eyeball it um, as well. So I'm going to do four tablespoons of curry powder. And this is <laughs> not hot. So board certified in uh, family practice, as well as um, I'm going to turn down the heat. Put it down on low. Um, failing practice and lifestyle medicine. So currently, I see patients um, from different states of the country. I'm currently licensed in ten or eleven states right now. Um, I'm based in California, and then I also do one-on-one um, -on -one coaching as well. Um, so that's a different process. Uh, coaching involves, um, you know, I focus on thriving. So different aspects of thriving. So I use different pillars. Um, for example, food is medicine. We talk about fitness. We talk about quality relationships. We talk about establishing community. And we talk about enhancing emotional resilience. Those are my pillars for thriving. And that's typically what I do um, when I coach. Uh, when I do lifestyle medicine consultations, it's different than visiting your primary care physician because I spend... 30 minute appointments, one hour, um, you know, appointments. So, and I do lifestyle medicine consultations, focusing on the pillars of lifestyle medicine. Um, um, and I can do 30 minutes, one hour appointments. Okay. That's a different platform. Um, so I do, I offer two different kinds of services. Um, and, uh, yeah, so we work alongside your primary care and or specialists. Um, and, you know, for those of you that are frustrated with spending, um, you know, very, very limited amount of time. Um, so was I, uh, and so that's why I decided to not, uh, I used to do primary care. Um, and so. I got out of that, got certified in lifestyle medicine because I needed to know a better way. Um, and so basically, um, now I get to spend 30 minute appointments, one hour minute appointments uh, with my patients and we talk everything about diet and lifestyle. Um, so yeah, those are the services that I offer. I'm really excited about the coaching piece. Uh, we do six month one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching. And then uh, for those of you who've been following my, the, the show, um, we just launched the app, um, the Chef Doc app, uh, which is a 24-7 on-demand um, educational uh, platform. 
And, um, you know, we coach alongside in, uh, with the app as well. So um, very, very exciting stuff. Okay. Um, so once you um, uh, dry roast, uh, you still there, Chef AJ? Yeah. Oh, no, of course. No, no, no. Um, I went to the store, but I'll be You back. went to the store. Oh, lovely. I'm just kidding. <laughs> That'd be funny. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so basically, once you dry roast, which is bloom the spices, you add in the aromatics. So Indian cooking, there's a lot of aromatics, like, you know, onion, shallots, ginger, um, you know, uh, garlic. You know, those are kind of the main uh, ones. I don't have shallots in here. Um, and... Uh, yeah, that's what I use. I use onions, garlic, and ginger that I just prepped uh, and, uh, for you guys. So, so once, so you throw these guys in, okay? I did do a splash of water, okay? So you can water saute or you could sweat it. Um, you know, sweating is an, uh, another technique um, and that helps to kind of release uh, the moisture out. And so you just kind of do this um, let me turn up the heat a little bit. Um, it was burning a little bit, so I had to turn down the heat. So you kind of have to constantly adjust for this. Uh, and you want to kind of do this um, until it becomes translucent, okay? Oh, uh, let's see. Does anyone have any questions so far? A couple of questions were sent in, but not on the recipe. If you guys have any questions, please put them in the chat. And you can see the pot okay, right? Oh, yeah. I am, that's, I've got it spotlighted right now. Okay. Is there any good uh, Indian uh, eateries around you, Chef AJ? There might be. I have not been to an Indian restaurant, yes, but there is an amazing Vietnamese one called Pho Fresh that I am just crazy about. He's going to mm. be on the show on the 18th. It's so good. Mm. It's the best pho I've ever had. I don't know how he does it SOS free. It's, mm. and it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a vegan pho? Well, yes, vegan. And he, his restaurant isn't vegan, but he is, and he has a vegan kitchen and he's opening up a vegan eatery next door in July called vegan, uh, faux vegan. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. So everything, everything looks good here. So what we do is, uh, once this is cooking, uh, more, so this is probably another, like been cooking for five minutes. So basically it's starting to get translucent a little bit. Um, it's what you want to do that. You want to bring out the flavors um, a lot. And this is very simple, you know, I mean, onions, garlic, ginger, um, these are foundational ingredients for a lot of ethnic cooking. Um, and it's just really about um, playing around with different kinds of recipes. Um, okay, so after that, um, we're going to throw in the main ingredients, okay? So I have prepped the uh, potatoes, okay? We're going to throw in the butternut uh, squash and peas, Pretty. And um, all right. And then from here, we're going to put in uh, the wild mushrooms, chickpeas, and yellow split pea mixture. Now you want to make sure to know what is the capacity of your, um, your pot so you're not going over um, as well. What size is yours? Is it a six quart? This is a, so the max, the max you can do is 18 cups for this. Okay. So I don't know. What is that in liters? 
What is the size of yours? I have a three quart uh, and I have an eight quart. Okay. So I'm going to throw the rest of it. All right. So once you have this, you're going to add in around five, roughly around five cups of water or a veggie broth. Okay. Um, I currently don't have veggie broth on hand, so I'm just going to use water. Now, there's different versions of curry. You have Indian curry, you have Thai curry, uh, you have Japanese curry. I think Koreans have a, uh, 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 their own curry. So it's very different. Indian type of curry is very thick. Um, it's like a thick, almost like a thick sauce. And usually um, you do that over a bed of rice. Now, because we're on Chef AJ's show, um, you know, to kind of add more like quote unquote salt and umami, I'm actually gonna be using um, miso paste. So not, not, um, not straight up salt. And this recipe calls for around four, um, four tablespoons. So it's just miso paste in here and then Oh, here's a question from Marley. What's the main difference between curries like from different areas or different countries? Yeah, so the, 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 the difference is, is that it's really the blend of spices. The blend of spices and curry is usually the vehicle that carries flavor, um, carries flavor and is usually, it's curry is not usually the main dish. It's usually highlighting something. So for Indian cooking, there's a lot of, uh, there's like chicken curry, there's goat curry. Um, and so it usually highlights a certain type of protein. Um, so for here, for this one, we're going to be highlighting, you know, the butternut squash. We're going to be highlighting the chickpeas. Um, we're going to be highlighting, um, you know, the English peas that you see here. Okay. Um, and everything else, it's kind of like a concert. It's like a nice orchestra. It's like a nice symphony. Um, everyone has a certain role um, to play. So now you notice how I didn't like put the water up to here, for example, right? Because when you cook it down, yes, you're going to have less water, but it will make it too soupy. So I do a little bit less. You're going to have to kind of try it out to eyeball it and do a couple of iterations. Um, so, um, you know, I did a little bit less. Okay. So from here, um, all right, so now uh, we're going to cover it. We're gonna, we're ready to pressure, pressurize it. Just wanna welcome all of you. Uh, you will notice. Can you hear me? Yeah, perfect. Okay. All right, so now we're on pressure cook uh, setting. So it's on high and I usually put this up to 35 to 40. So uh, we can do 40, okay? And then you just press start and you're pretty much good to go. Wait, so you have to do it for 40 minutes? Yep. Really? I, I thought things go much faster in a pressure cooker usually. Um, this one is really to cook it down even more. Um, wow. and it's probably, it probably does, but you know, I typically like just to make sure, um, uh, make sure everything is like cooked, uh, down, um, pretty well. So now if you come back to me, uh, Chef yeah, AJ, yeah, absolutely. So. um, do you want me to keep it on the pressure cooker or just you? No, you can get off the pressure cooker. 
Okay, let me let me un, let me get you spotlighted. Then there we go. Uh, Marley's also asking, are uh, you know, because when you, curry is actually a blend. There's no one curry. Like if you go to the store, you read the la the label. Different spices comprise it. So is it different? Well, let me get her exact question. In different, are different spices used in different countries? There's green curry, red curry, for example. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, so green curry, red curry, that's more Thai curries. Um, so different types of chilies are used uh, for that. Um, with Indian curry, it's typically a blend of what I just put in there. Um, and it's usually brownish yellow. Um, and that's the combination of the spices that we're using with turmeric. Okay. Turmeric, the main component is curcumin. That's what gives it its yellow pigment. Um, and, um, you know, you're blending it depending on what you're, you know, cooking it with um, as well. I'm making it a little bit uniform with the golden potatoes, the butternut squash, the yellow split peas. So it makes it more of like a uniform, like yellowish, you know, theme to it. And then, um, yeah, so that's what I do. But yes, for example, you're, you, you mentioned red, green. So that's like different types of uh, chilies that Thai, um, Thai cuisines uh, use. So, um, so basically we're not going to wait for that to cook down. So basically what we're doing is that <clears throat> I'm going to, you can garnish this, uh, with chives. You can use scallions. Um, I like to use, uh, wait, wait what's in that bowl? What, what is in that white bowl? This is a uh, rice. This is oh, red okay. Rice. That's a beautiful rice. Is that a black rice or a red rice? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's it's a black rice. Um, no, it's red rice. I'm sorry, it's red rice. Sometimes you have, uh, sometimes you hear in restaurants like forbidden rice. So it's a combination of black and red. Um, so growing up, I, I ate, um, you know, we ate typical uh, white rice. Um, and, you know, I'm sure you guys have learned if you've been on Chef AJ's show is that um, it's very processed. You know, a lot of, you know, this, uh, the outer coverings um, has been stripped down. So you are missing a lot of fiber, fiber and bees, right? And so we gravitated as time went on, as we started to learn, we gravitated towards brown rice and then started dabbling in other types of grains. So when I went to school and training, the easiest thing for me to do was, you know, take a rice cooker and blend um, combinations of brown rice and quinoa and just have that as a foundation, kind of like a bed for something. And then I would either do stir fry or, you know, cook something up on the stovetop and then just layer it on. And then everything is just complete. You know, a lot of cultures um, would combine a grain with, um, with like a, different type of bean and legume and that enhances um the amino acid and protein profile and that becomes you get you know the essentials um you know amino acids from those combinations so for example you know mexican cuisine there's a lot of bean, beans and rice um you know things like that so so what we're going to do is i'm just going to uh use uh you know chives um to just as a garnish do you normally cook your rice in a rice cooker? And if so, which one? Uh, any, any ones are good. You just go to an Asian market and just purchase one. I don't have a brand offhand. Um, yeah, they're really, they're really cheap um, to get. I think your Instapot can probably, can probably rice do too, rice, yeah. right? Yeah. I got mine at uh, Costco for $29 and it works great. And I've had it for years. Oh, yeah. It's called the Aromi. Oh yeah, it's, it's great um very very easy to use okay so we're not going to wait until that cooked so basically i already have um the finished product um so we're going to take some rice Now you, it's good to do this over like, you know, brown rice or quinoa, you know, things like that. Um, and so oh, I've right, the, the curry is already here. Oh, you already had some made, huh? Yes. Yes. The TV show, Chef Oh Eddie. my God, that's You already, you already know this. You already know this. Oh, that looks delicious. 
English peas, how are they different than regular peas? Bigger, smaller, greener? Uh, they're, they're, um, I mean, you probably saw, uh, I think they're around the same size. They're a little bit bigger, to be honest. All right. They're great. They're really, really nutritious. And then I just put some chives over it. And then you adjust the seasonings, um, you know, for yourself. Oh, wow. That plating is beautiful. And uh, yeah, so, you know, in Southern California, I know for you in NorCal, um, you know, this winter has been like, you know, <laughs> going overboard uh, in terms of everything. So, um, you know, sometimes we have breezy, uh, cooler temperatures, um, you know, during the morning. So this is like perfect for like, a lunch or a breakfast, um, you know, things like that. So not much of a breakfast guy, but yeah. So here you go. That is gorgeous. Yeah. So you got your chickpeas, your potatoes, your butternut squash. Uh, everything is just, you know, being able to, uh, eaten pretty well. So, um, so yeah, so that's uh, that's the dish. Uh, does anyone have any questions about prepping, cooking on a budget, um, cooking things in a one pot? Yeah, it's still going. Uh, if, cooking if in they, a one pot, anything like that. If they do, please post them. In the meantime, um, if you wouldn't mind, just because when people know in advance that a certain doctor is going to be on, they often send in questions and two came in specifically for you. Great. Okay. Can you see me now and not the squirrel? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the chipmunk, Good. yeah. <laughs> when I turn my camera off, it's a chipmunk. Uh, so Karen said, Dr. Zhu, I was told by a Mayo Clinic doctor many years ago that my allergy to sea salt, I'm allergic to shellfish too, was due to the fact that most sea salt contains microscopic particles of shellfish. It means that I'm unable to buy any commercial brands of plant milk because they almost always contain sea salt or eat at most restaurants as sea salt has become ubiquitous, especially at vegetarian and vegan restaurants. Do you think there's any way to get the word out to the powers that be that sea salt should be labeled as a possible allergen? She says using sea salt and where? Well, she says it's in, it's very common in restaurant foods and in plant milks, apparently. Plant milks. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I mean, you can make your own plant milk pretty easily, many different kinds. Yeah, yeah. And that's, um, and that's another, another thing too with, um, you know, cooking on a budget is that it's a trade-off at the end of the day. So like, for example, that's why, you know, I tell my patients and my coaching clients that your health starts in the kitchen. So the more that you can cook for yourself and prep for yourself, you know what's going in. So for example... You know, if you have an allergy like that, um, it's better to just, you know, make your own stuff. Yes, it's more labor intensive. Yes, it takes a little bit more creativity um, and understanding, you know, what works. Um, but it's, you know, there's a lot of things you can, you know, do to go around. To answer a question about the powers that be, that's, um, that's tough. Um that's a lot, that's a lot, that's a tougher question to answer because the powers that be is like, you know, many different things. So, you know, individual restaurants, they kind of operate on their own or they have restaurant chains. Right. Um, and then you have the manufacturers of the sea salt. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, if you're already consuming SOS, right. Free, then you are increasing your flavor and savory, you know, profile and umami profile in different ways, right? So you're not just using sea salt to flavor a dish, right? Um, you know, when I went to school, you know, they did different ways. Um, so, you know, I did the miso paste for this dish, right? So that's not adding salt. Um, you know, you could do like tomato paste, right? And that's like really, really concentrated, you know, uh, tomatoes, right? Um, it's just different ways of you know, increasing a certain profile without using salt because salt has been ubiquitous of flavoring, especially in traditional culinary schools. Um, and what's sad is that a lot of the salt um, is not 
fortified with iodine. We used to get iodine from salt. And now a lot, you have, I actually have to look to find iodized, you know, salt, you know? Um, but nowadays, you know, we, you know, I, you know, supplement um, iodine with just nori sheets. So I don't know if I answered that question. Um, but would, would nori have sea salt in it as well? Or because it depends every, every, um, every, um, every manufacturer uh, has something different. Um, I'm able to find, usually, usually it's already salty to begin with. Um, so, you know, I, I'm able to find ones that are not, that though, that doesn't have the added uh, salt. So Great. you just kind of have to like, look, yeah. Thank you. The next question is from, who's it from? Uh, Sherry. My husband is being very supportive of us going vegan vegetarian and he's lost 20 pounds, but he worries about getting enough protein. So he adds protein powder to his smoothies and also drinks those processed muscle milk to add more. Can mm. you explain why there's no need for him to do that? Yeah, so that's a very good question. So, um, you know, there's protein in like everything, you know, every, every fruit and vegetable actually has protein. Um, and if you think about it, um, you know, when you're, when you're eating the middleman, which is cows, goats, chickens, you know, pigs, things like that, where are they getting their sources from? They're getting it from mother earth. Right. So, um, you know, I'm just looking at, there is a certain database, um, in the FDA, um, that when you look at, you know, when you type in a certain, uh, actual, uh, plant-based ingredient, it will break down its nutritional profile. But for example, I'm going to, I'm going to cite you examples. Okay, guava, okay, has 4.2 grams of protein per cup. Okay, avocados has four grams of protein per cup. Okay, pomegranate, okay, um, 2.9 grams of protein per cup, right? Beans, lentils, okay, that's almost like a no-brainer. Um, you know, uh, soy products, tofu has yields the highest. Hi, buddy. Um, and, um, you know, nuts and seeds, you know, see, hemp seeds, nine grams of protein per ounce. Pumpkin seeds, 8.6 grams per ounce. Almonds, uh, six grams per ounce. Grains, okay, uncooked, uncooked um, oats, 26.3 grams per cup, okay. Uh, quinoa, okay, which is a complete protein, uh, 8.1 grams of protein per cup. So, um, and even things like asparagus, okay, 5.2 grams of protein per cup. Artichokes that are cooked, 5.2 grams of protein per cup. So I'm just citing different examples that it's really based off of how we're conditioned, um, you know, growing up and, you know, just learning about um, nutrition in the popular sense that vegetables, fruits don't contain protein and only, you know, we're, we only associate protein with meat and that's not true. Mm -hmm. And in terms of, you know, the powders, honestly, that's not regulated. You know, you can get all kinds of stuff, you know, with powders that, you know, can slip by as preservatives, binders, additives, right. Um, similar to like packaged foods, right. And you have no idea what's, you know, what you're getting along with all that. So, you know, I might've said this in the pre previous episodes, it's not as simple as breaking down protein, carbohydrates, and fats by itself. You have to think about it on, in terms of what it's wrapped with, okay? An animal protein is different than a plant protein because of how it's wrapped, okay? Animal protein has something called, you know, heme iron, okay? They, you know, meat and seafood have a lot of protein, but it comes with things that create choline and TMAO, which are independent cardio, you know, um, you know, toxicants, you know what I'm saying? Um, and pro, you know, inflammatory, pro inflammatory components. Okay. Um, plant proteins, they're wrapped with your necessary essential vitamins, minerals, phytonutrients, and fiber, which is not existent in animal based sources. So again, it's really about not single-handedly just focusing on these components. It's basically, you have to think about in its whole picture. And so when I teach, it's from a whole food plant-based approach. 
So the definition is, is in its name, whole food plant-based. So as long as you are eating things in its whole intact form, then you are getting the synergistic effect of, you know, what you want from, you know, the nutrition from that particular food. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. You, um, you're doing walk with a doc now, right? Yes. So, uh, thank you for highlighting that. We are starting walk with a doc. Um, I wish you were here, chef AJ. Um, that way you can just join us. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, we're doing Walk with the Doc. So Walk with the Doc, if for those of you who don't know, is a nonprofit organization started by a cardiologist, a uh, great fellow, um, back in 2005. And he wanted to do more with his patients and not just write a prescription. And so he started Walk with the Doc, and it's a walking group program that meets monthly, typically monthly. And it's uh, started with um, a health talk, a brief health talk for like 10 minutes, and then you walk. The whole thing is just an hour and you walk with your peers, your neighbors, fellow local residents, other healthcare professionals. And it's a way to get some physical activity and it's a way to, you know, um, communicate with your healthcare professional. Um, And it's a way to just get out there in the community, in the neighborhood. Um, And uh, we're starting, I started a local chapter here in Lake Forest, which is right outside of Irvine in Orange County, California. So if you're in the area, we are doing our first walk at 9 a.m. Um, on May 13th, which is the following Saturday. Um, to the, yeah, next Saturday. And then, uh, yeah, you just come on my website um, and then, you know, sign a waiver and join us. Uh, I'll be more than happy to meet you in person. And we're going to be doing that every second Saturday of every uh, month. Um, and we'll see how this goes for the first year. And if you go on my website, you'll also find information um, on lifestyle medicine consults, as well as coaching, um, you know, uh, information as well. And if you wanted to learn more, you can just sign up for a free 15 minute discovery call um, to see how we can help you, um, you know, optimize your health. So. Cool. Thank you. Well, this was great. So let's see, next month is June. There's not really any holidays that you necessarily have to cook for. (laughs) <laughs> no, June is uh, Father's Day, the maybe, beginning of the huh? summer, right? Right. <laughs> Father's Day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Father's Day. So, um, but my dad doesn't need a holiday to, uh, you know, to celebrate, you know, the joy of eating. You know, it's every day for him. <laughs> That's great. What's your kitty's name again? Naruto. It's Japanese for uh, fish cake, um, but um, it's based off of an anime character. Um, and I named him that because the character dressed in a lot of orange uh, clothing and he's um, a very mischievous, um, really bold character. And so that's kind of how I see cats. Um, and for my cat's personality, he's very mischievous, um, but he's also a big risk taker and likes to push the boundaries. And uh, he's very charming, very handsome. And I'm looking to... Uh, you know, record more educational videos uh, in the near future. So you will definitely see more of him. Yeah. He's currently sitting on the couch staring at me. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> oh, he's great. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Zhu. This was wonderful. Well, thank you very much. Um, and yeah, thank you for, uh, you know, having um, some curry. And then, you know, definitely uh, we'll see you guys next month. And if you have any questions, drop, drop a line, visit the website. It was a pleasure being on your show again, Chef AJ. That looks delicious. Thanks so much, Dr. Zhu. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow, Sunday at 9 a.m. Pacific time for Chef Dell's Kitchen. And he's going to be celebrating Nacho Mama's Day. It's a cross between Cinco de Mayo and Mother's Day. And he's going to be making scrambled cauliflower ranchero style with a ranchero sauce, pan roasted corn and peppers, easy refried beans, and a Mexican chocolate pudding. That sounds good, doesn't it, Dr. Zhu? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm about to knock on his door and come in. <laughs> Great. Well, he, he's, in, he's somewhere in Ohio, though. Okay. Well, take care, Dr. Zhu, and thanks, everyone.